We were recently contacted by a station who wanted to know if it was possible to control the smart transfer system for controlling on-air switching via an external air switch or physical hardware device. Here's the solution we came up with. Let's take a look. This is their main Studio One playout system. You can see it's currently on air and playing a on air track. Here we have the automation system, which is off air and is not doing anything currently. And finally, we've set up the hardware manager to have some hardware inputs. Now, these could be triggered from a physical GPI or from an IP. So let's look what happens when the external device triggers a smart transfer. As you can see, we've set up line one to switch to automation. So let's simulate a physical or IP switch on that hardware line. As you can see, the smart transfer has already initiated and has synced up the automation machine with the live playout. Normally this would be a, a, a momentary closure, so we'll just turn that off again. Now, in Smart Transfer, what will happen is when this item, the feeling, gets to the end of that track, the transfer will automatically start the automation machine, and as long as you, and obviously your air switch would need to follow suit so that the automation machine is the one that's playing out live to your listeners. So let's take a closer look at this. You can see we only have um, about 15 seconds left on this. Just going to position this here. As you can see, you get five seconds. It's just going to automatically start the automation playing. So there we have room five is now playing in the on the automation box and the uh, the studio machine is now off air and it's just finishing off playing the item it was playing. Okay, let's see if we want to transfer back. So let's go back here, bring up our hardware, and this time we need to trigger hardware line two, so let's turn that one on. As you can see, the same thing has happened in reverse. Can talk about it off again because it's just a momentary closure. So as you can see, um, the automation machine is preparing for smart transfer, and in the studio, it's queued up the current item ready to play. And at the end of Maroon Five, it will actually play, move on to the next track. So let's just move this along a little bit to uh, speed up things. So here we can see, just got a few seconds left. And transfer has put the automation machine back, sorry, the, the studio machine back live to it. Okay, so let's take a look at exactly how we achieve that. The first and most important element are the commands used to trigger the smart transfer. These are attached to media items, and here you can see we've set up a media item on media ID 5000 that is smart transfer to automation and a corresponding one for a smart transfer to Studio One. So let's take a look at the script. Highlight the item, click Edit. And here you can see the script that we've written to automate this process. This line here, qoe.requesttransfer2, is the line that actually triggers the smart transfer. But before that, we've got some error handling here to just ensure that we, the system is not going to do something unexpected. The first section here is checking to see if the location that we're trying to transfer to is the same as the location on the machine. So this means that if we trigger this hardware event on the machine that already has control, it will simply exit the command, uh, exit the uh, command altogether, and it won't do anything further. The next line checks to see if it has on-air control. If it doesn't, it exits. Finally, we're checking to see if the machine that is transferring is in standby mode, because obviously if it doesn't have on-air control and isn't active, it can't transfer um, to a different machine. So assuming these first three items are not triggered, 
Then finally, we'd move on to the final line in the command here, which is qae.requesttransfer2. And then the two uh, variables here, the first one is the station ID, and the second one is the location we want to transfer to. So the station ID is uh, minus one, which is the open station, or if you want to pick a specific station ID, then the first station in the list will be zero, the next one will be one, the next one will be two. And the location is the unique location that we want to transfer to. But how do we know what the location is? If you go to the settings menu, database settings, database settings, and there's a locations tab. Here we have all of the workstations on your network, and by each one we have an ID number. So our automation machine is on ID number 10. So if we go back to our command here, we can see that this line here is asking to transfer smart transfer to station minus one or the open station and location number 10, which is the automation. You'll also notice that in this example, we've remmed out the lines that uh, will throw up a message box if this isn't an automated thing, if this was something you wanted a human to trigger, then you would undo the rem on those message boxes so that the user would see a message to confirm the action they want to take. Looking briefly at uh, 5001, you can see that the command is virtually the same, except for in this case, we are transferring to location nine, which is our studio PC. Another really important thing to consider is that these commands will only work when triggered from the on-air machine. So if I put this studio machine on air, I know I trigger the transfer to automation command manually using uh, the media ID by just double clicking on it. You can see it has triggered the um, smart transfer. And if I bring up the automation PC, you'll see that it's waiting for the go, and when we hit go, the automation PC is now the on-air machine. However, if I was to try and do the reverse here and double click on the Studio One, it will not work because it doesn't have control, so we can't do it. However, if I was to do the same thing from the automation machine, that will work. Now, this isn't too important if you are running uh, this from the hardware manager, because what we'll actually do is we'll send the command to all workstations. And the error handling we put into the commands means that any machines that don't have on-air control or aren't actively running will ignore the command altogether. So although we need to run this command on the active on-air machine, by triggering it from the hardware manager, we'll actually run it simultaneously on all of the workstations and um, only the workstation that it's relevant to will action it. Now that our commands are in place, let's take a look at how we configured the hardware service to allow these to be triggered remotely. First of all, on one of the PCs in your network, you need to have the broadcast radio hardware service installed. Um, this is covered in other videos and documentation, so we won't be covering it in this video, but we happen to have the hardware service already installed on this computer. If I look on the configuration options, we can see that we have a virtual network device already pre-configured. If you haven't got one, you need to right click, add a virtual network device. On the virtual network device, we're just gonna use simple commands and as you can see, I have added in some labels onto input command, input line one and two, and labeled them switch to automation and switch studio one. If you are triggering the hardware service from an IP command instead of a physical GPI, then you also need to turn on the listen port and make a note of the expression line, which is hardware, and then the number, and then on, or HW line, and then the number, then off. This is the string you need to send to turn each hardware line on or off. If the device you're connecting to requires a custom string, 
you can go into the advanced text matching mode where you can actually add in custom strings for each hardware line. But in this case, we're going to stick with a simple command mode. OK, service is running, so it's time to have a look at the hardware service monitor. This application allows you to view the status of any of the hardware lines on your system. You can see here is our virtual network device, and here is our switch to automation and switch to Studio One. We can actually simulate these by simply clicking on and clicking off again. And this will act the same as if a hardware or an IP trigger had uh, triggered that hardware line. This will allow us to test our commands in a few moments. But unfortunately, that's only half the story. We also have to tell Myriad what to do when those hardware lines are triggered. This is done on each workstation that needs to respond to the hardware lines using the settings and hardware settings option. In here, you can see a list of the hardware devices available. If, uh, as we're currently running on the same PC, you can see that this is set to local host. So if I double click on it, you can see it's set to local host. You can choose the device and you can see the description and the port. If I'm setting this up on a PC that isn't running the hardware service, then you simply substitute local host for the computer name or IP address of the computer that is running the hardware service. Usually when you make a change to this, it's a good idea to close the hardware service and then reopen it as most of the settings are actually read on load. Once your hardware device is set up, it's time to set the individual hardware lines. Here you can see I've already set them up. So let's take a look at how they're done. Double click on one and you'll see you have the hardware device you want to attach, attach to. There's only one in this system. And then the hardware line we want to use. In this case, this is for automation. So we want to choose switch to automation. Then on the assignment type, you can choose the type of action that Myriad will perform when this hardware line is triggered. In this case, we want to play a specific, a specific media ID. So we want to choose media ID control. We want it to play and we want to choose the media ID to play. In this case, media ID 5000. If we take a look at the next one, we'll see the settings very similar, only this time we've chosen hardware line two and media ID 5001. So what this means is whenever we trigger that hardware line, either hardware line will trigger Hardware line one will trigger media ID 5000 and hardware line two will trigger 5001. And that's how we can get the effect we saw earlier by simply turning a hardware line on and off. We can trigger the smart transfer. And that's about it for this. Um, if you are wanting to trigger this via IP, you just simply send the hardware command we saw earlier, HD line, then the number, and then on or off to the specified IP address and port set in the hardware service. If, however, you were doing this through traditional IPs, instead of a virtual network device, you would have um, chosen the specific hardware device you wanted to use. Everything else would have been the same. So hopefully that's everything you need to set up hardware or IP triggering of smart transfer. For more helpful articles and videos, please visit help.broadcastradio.com.